efficient irrigation systems deliver real economic benefits to a nursery. The aim of any design is to apply enough water evenly to meet all plant needs in the time available. This webinar details the requirements for designing a nursery irrigation system to provide even water application, save money in capital and running costs, save water, and meet the management constraints necessary to run the nursery. So why bother with irrigation design? There are many systems that have been installed without going through this process. However, these designs are unlikely to be as water and energy efficient and as easy to use as a well-designed irrigation system. As mentioned at the start of the webinar, a good irrigation design will apply sufficient water evenly to meet all plant needs in the time available. The irrigation system should be hydraulically sound and operate at the correct pressure. To achieve this, the system needs to have the appropriate pipe sizes, layout, emitters, discharge rates and control systems. The water requirement for the nursery's plants is determined by factors such as evaporation rates, water holding capacity of the growing media and the types and sizes of the containers to be irrigated. Evaporation rates can be obtained from the internet, local weather stations or agricultural research stations. Look at the average summer evaporation rates and the maximum summer rates to get an understanding of the range of evaporation rates the plants will experience and use this as a guide for determining crop water use. Water holding capacity of growing media for most pine bark growing media is around 40% by weight. The readily available water to maintain plant growth is less than half this amount. Other growing media such as coir can hold larger quantities of readily available water. The types and sizes of containers will dictate the effective storage volume available and therefore the irrigation frequency. Tall containers hold more water than trays and can be watered less frequently. To apply water in the time available, a range of factors need to be considered. The nursery operator needs to determine at what times the prevailing winds normally occur and whether the irrigation times can be set for when the wind is calm or light enough to prevent distortion of the sprinkler pattern. If not, wind breaks or a bottom watering or drip irrigation system may be needed. Some plants are susceptible to plant diseases if irrigated at night or if they have wet foliage late in the afternoon. The operator should decide the best time to schedule irrigation to prevent this, or perhaps use a system that does not wet the foliage, such as drip irrigation. Irrigation should be done at times when it does not interfere with staff working in that area, like preparing plants for dispatch, spraying fungicides, potting up, or in a retail nursery, the times that customers are present. It may be possible to take advantage of cheaper power tariffs by pumping off peak. And the nursery operator should also consider discussing water supply arrangements with the local authority if water supplies are limiting. Planning, designing, installing, operating and maintaining nursery irrigation systems requires input from a team of people with different skills. The team includes the nursery owner, who is responsible for overseeing the process and communicating with and coordinating the members of the team. Production staff who will manage the system on a day-to-day -day basis and may have some input into the construction of the system. The irrigation designer who collects the relevant information and designs a system that meets the requirements of the nursery. Equipment suppliers supplying the materials for the installation and system installers who install the equipment to the specification of the design. The starting point for irrigation design is the division of the nursery into a number of blocks that have similar water needs and management requirements. Within these divisions, there may also be other subdivisions of pot sizes and plant varieties which can be dealt with by block management. It's possible to combine several system types in the one nursery. Once the divisions have been identified, investigate the most suitable type of system for use in each area. 
some examples of irrigation system types and where they can be used. Uh, misting or fog systems with separate controls for propagation areas. Drippers for tall or large foliage plants, large containers, hanging baskets, flowering plants or plants susceptible to fungal diseases. Low application rate sprinklers with fine droplet sizes for seedling trays, ferns and indoor plants with possible thermostatic control for cooling and humidification. Capillary matting or ebb and flow systems for potted colour and single sail lines. Overhead irrigation for outdoor stock. Inverted micro sprinklers in shade houses. Mobile booms for bedding plants, seedlings and tube stock. And trough systems for plants susceptible to fungal diseases. The following provides information on the considerations for each of these irrigation system types. For overhead sprinkler systems, the key points to note uh, the layout and shape of each area should be assessed so that the appropriate sprinkler spacing can be selected, taking into account the spacing of support posts and windbreaks. Upright or inverted sprinklers need the riser or dropper heights to be correctly set. Rigid poly risers screwed into adapters allow easy changeover to adjust sprinkler heights to suit different crops. The mean application rate that best suits the growing media absorption rate and crop being grown should be determined. The type of sprinkler, diameter of coverage, distribution pattern, height of jet stream and operating pressure should be ascertained for the sprinklers. Wind conditions likely to be encountered in each area and the best method of minimising any distortion effect must be considered. Obtain computer printouts of mean application rate, coefficient of uniformity and scheduling coefficient for each spacing and sprinkler selected. These factors can be measured by setting up four sprinklers and measuring their performance to assess their suitability for the nursery. Decide on the best location of laterals, sub mains and risers. The use of control heads with valve and pressure tappings either buried or above the ground will allow easy access and be protected from damage by normal nursery operations. Reduce scheduling coefficients by locating sprinklers on a square grid and to the edge of the growing area. Before installing a mobile boom irrigation system, the nursery operator should ask the following questions. Will the boom be used to irrigate or also used to apply fertilizers and pesticides? Does the boom need to irrigate in both directions? What range of application rates and boom travel speeds are required to supply plants over their whole growing cycle? And is proportional application required by varying the speed of the boom? What are the water requirements of the plants and at what frequency do they require irrigation? What operating pressures does each nozzle set require? and how will this be regulated? Does there need to be an option to raise or lower the boom height? Key questions for drip irrigation systems include, what is the range of container sizes to be watered so that dripper rates and the number of dripper stakes in each container can be decided? Is pulsing required to better match application rates to the growing media absorption rate? What is the time needed to apply water to each section? How many drippers and what is the discharge rate and pressure required for each dripper? If liquid feeding is used, what arrangement needs to be made at the control head of each block? Will the dripper laterals be located at ground level or elevated on a wire along the rows? How should containers be spaced so that the drip system is set up to create minimum interference to staff as containers are moved in and out of the area? When considering bottom watering systems, what is the required frequency and cycle time of each water application? What are the flow rates that will match absorption rates of the growing media? What is the line pressure required to deliver the flow rates to each system? Will wastewater be recycled or run to waste? and what type of fertilising system is used by the nursery. 
Once the best system is selected for the nursery's needs, the following factors should be assessed by the nursery operator. The level of water quality required and how to achieve this through filtration and treatment. The most suitable water disinfestation treatment to remove plant pathogens. The level of automation that suits the management needs and budget constraints of the business. The total number of hours the irrigation system will operate in summer and whether this matches the management constraints. The number of pumps required in the pumping station and what backup facilities are needed. The installation of Schrader valves or pressure measurement to set and check the pressure of each block, the shutoff pressure of the pump, the pressure loss across filters and pump operating pressures. What protection and control equipment is required for the pumping unit and determine how the recycling system will be integrated into the irrigation design. Many nurseries are now considering variable frequency drive pump packages to provide operational flexibility and reduced running costs. There are three scenarios where a VFD is appropriate and can save on operating costs. When a constant pressure is needed but the flow rate is variable, for example all the irrigation zones are designed to operate at the same pressure but are scheduled to overlap during irrigations, the VFD will increase pump speed to meet the flow demand. When a constant flow rate is needed, but the pressure is variable, such as when a well or bore experiences drawdown and the water level changes, a VFD increases the pump speed to meet the total pressure required. When both flow rate and pressure are variable, such as when multiple irrigation systems with different operating requirements are used simultaneously, or when irrigation zones are at different elevations, the VFD will ramp up and down to meet the irrigation requirements. Identifying when not to install a VFD is a little more complicated as it depends on the design and components of the irrigation system. Some potential scenarios when a VFD may not provide acceptable cost savings are when both pressure and flow rate are constant. For example, when all irrigation zones are the same elevation are designed to operate at the same pressure and are scheduled to irrigate sequentially without any overlap and consequently the pump operation doesn't vary. In this case a single constant speed pump sized correctly can provide efficient operation. When an efficient multi-stage multi-pump setup is currently in use and meets all pumping requirements there may be some benefits by managing and sharing the duty cycle of the pumps to extend pump life and reduce maintenance costs a careful analysis is required to determine if the cost benefit will be acceptable. A VFD may not be able to effectively control the pressure in systems with a high static pressure where water is being pumped to high elevations. When pumps operate for extended periods at low flow conditions there is a risk of the motor overheating. Small pumps that only operate for short periods of time may not have acceptable payback periods for the extra cost of a VFD. Having gathered the required background information and made the decision on the preferred type of irrigation system, the irrigation designer can now be engaged to determine the design pipe sizes, control valves, filters and the pumping duties required. The designer can then prepare a list of equipment required to build the system and then prepare plans and drawings to show positioning and arrangement of equipment to meet the nursery's requirements. The designer can be called on to assess the installation or verify its adequacy. And if required, the designer can also comment on alternative arrangements or equipment suggested by equipment suppliers and installers. Following the completion of the design, the equipment supplier and installer can now prepare a quotation for the supply and installation of the equipment. Once approved, supply and install the equipment. After installation, check that the system meets the requirements of the design by operating and performing all necessary checks and comparing the results with those specified by the designer. Measure and calculate mean application rate, coefficient of uniformity and scheduling coefficient for each block. And advise the nursery owner of the maintenance and warranty periods of the equipment prior to acceptance. 
the nursery operator should always discuss any suggested changes, additions or modifications with the designer prior to acceptance and installation. The nursery owner and the production staff with assistance from the irrigation supplier and designer should develop a maintenance plan for the care and ongoing operation of the system. The maintenance plan should detail the service requirements of the pumping equipment. Each component has its own maintenance requirements and must be inspected and serviced regularly to maintain the operation of the original installation. The schedule for maintaining filters and valves in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. The schedule for checking the operation of sprinklers for both discharge and pressure and assessing replacement needs. The protocols to check water quality of irrigation and runoff water, fertiliser concentration and leachate, and leachate volume. The protocols to check the disinfestation system operation and monitor chemical use and effectiveness. Protocols for monitoring fertigation system performance, fertiliser use and concentrations. A design brief is used to provide a summary of information to an irrigation designer to enable them to design an irrigation system. This table is a way of summarising the relevant information to give to the irrigation designer so they have an understanding of the specific requirements for your crops and nursery. The first step in the process is to list the range of plants and container sizes grown and the conditions they are grown in such as the shade level and growing structures. The second task is to specify the type of irrigation you prefer for each crop. This is an important decision to make and there are many factors to consider in deciding which irrigation type is the best. In the last section, information is input on the timing of irrigation. Firstly, specify the maximum hours per day for irrigation in each of the areas. This needs to take into account the type of irrigation systems and the climate and operational constraints of your nursery. Then consider a timetable of hours that are suitable for irrigation in summer, as this will usually be the maximum times required. In conclusion, designing an irrigation system is not solely about pumps and pipes. It's about plant water requirements, management constraints and watering evenly. These are the nursery operator's domain. Once these are determined, a good irrigation designer can prepare an efficient design that supports a profitable nursery operation, resulting in a system that works for you, not you working for the system. More information on designing nursery irrigation systems can be found at these websites and in these publications. For more information, contact the Nursery and Garden Industry Queensland. This webinar was produced using funding from the Queensland Government Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy under the Farm Water Futures Project.